stream. I don't really do the full length this time, but I'm um, fairly wrecked. Um, got into running a bit lately and I ran 10k today. And I'm shattered after it. Got to get the fitness levels up. But um, we're here in the workshop and uh, today we're going to play around with some hand planes. So um, my friend Mark has been finding all sorts of treasures lately. And uh, he's been, in fairness, he's been letting me borrow them so I can play with them. Uh, so this was a was a Marple's uh, triplane, and you use it for jointing a flat edge or a true edge on wooden boards. So I'm going to do that here now. And these were the kind of the tools that people used to use for hundreds of years. They had wooden planes like this. So I don't know, can you hear it, but it's surfing over all the high spots and it's scooping up wood along the way. And that should, in theory, give us, in time, a true flat surface. So around about the 1860s, a company called the Stanley Rule and Level Company release these metal planes um advantages being instead of adjusting them by hitting the hammer on the back of the iron you could have an adjustment knob here um a metal sole wouldn't wear out as quick or pretty much at all um and yeah they were a bit more frictiony frictiony they had more friction with the wood um the iron sole obviously didn't glide as smooth over wood as a wooden sole but they were also very expensive so woodworkers didn't really care for them and they weren't such a big hit um, so what they did then was they released the transitional plane hey super chat in from Dustin keep up the good work thank you very much so it has all the light weightedness and the wooden sole um, of a wooden plane but with the metal adjustment um, mechanism you find on uh, the Stanley's number one through eight. Um, Mark got this again, same fella. He's gotten some really nice finds here. He paid fifty pound for it, and it's literally never once been used. And you can tell because it still has its original machine marks from the date is actually on this, uh, from eighteen. Where is it now? 1867 so there's yeah someone sharpened it once so maybe it was used briefly but um yeah this hasn't seen too much use in the 150 odd year that's been around so today i'm gonna take a shaving with it mm -hmm. hey glenn how are you keeping um Glad to see it without wood chips on you, mate. Um, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm usually most happy when I have wood chips on me, Lynn. Um, did you find that wooden bowl you said you turned back, back when you used to be in the wood shop? You commented it there on a recent video. Okay, so I've forgotten about the old Stanleys that normally with the relatively modern ones, you twist clockwise to engage the iron, but it used to be you had to twist anti-clockwise to engage the iron. So um, let me see if I can wrap my head around this and engage this iron. I was wondering why I wasn't taking a shaving. There you go. You also have the lateral adjuster here, which is adjusting the tilt, which way the, the iron is sticking out. How have I been? I've been very well. I've been up in, um, in County Wicklow doing a, a real job, or pretending to at least, learning lots about timber framing for a roof that will actually go in situation. So that's something I'm having a bit of fun with. Oh, this is nice. Oh, this is very nice. I like this. He paid 50 quid for it. I offered to buy it off him for 70, but uh, he wouldn't let it go. Fair enough. Oh, lads.
know, when you first start getting into it working, it's much easier to learn with the metal planes, but in time, you really start to appreciate the wooden ones a lot more. So now, with, it only took us three planes, several hundred dollars worth and 700 years between them, several hundred years between them. But now we got a nice flat level, all without the use of any machines. What were these called and what were the three? They're called triplanes or jointer planes, and they would have been used to flatten surfaces of wood, um, like tables and workbenches, and they would have also been used to joint pieces of wood together. So if I have uh, it wouldn't be one of my live streams if we weren't on a dying phone battery. Um, so you, you have one perfect edge here, and you have another perfect edge, and you can join them together. So there you go. Let me plug in the phone here. Straight forward with that. Now, so. Now we're hurling. I had a failed project today, lads. I um, decided I'd make a big ass um, bow saw out of some teak, but uh, not even teak, out of some mahogany I had. But it ended up being a bit of a waste. Mahogany, unfortunately, because it didn't really work. It worked, but it wasn't any bit more efficient than using a, a smaller hand saw. The idea was to use this for timber framing. So, do you know what? Show don't tell. We'll show you just how. Now, I obviously haven't rounded out the handles or anything like that because I didn't feel the need to, considering it was a failure in my eyes. But um, I'll show you there now how one of my kids bought you with us. Right. I should try woodworking with the worst tools. There you go. I'm like one of them challenge YouTubers. That's a, it's not a bad idea actually, for the sake of good content. Well, maybe not good content, but entertaining content. Right, so here I have a about eight inch by eight inch um, piece of Douglas fir, an off cut from a, a shed I'm building at the moment. I am wrecked. Um, so we're already breaking. Oh, a super chat in from a Jason Step. Love your content. Keep up the good work. Can I wear the clogs on a plane? I might be fly. No, I won't try that out. I was gonna say I'm, I'm flying next month, and I'll, I'll let you know. But no, Jesus, that'd be fairly uncomfortable. Stomping through the airport. Anyway, I was saying I'm already after breaking the first rule of woodworking. You should be able to see both lines you're cutting to. If there was lines drawn here, uh, I would be able to see this one on the other side. I've also forgotten to tension the saw. This thing should play like a guitar string once it's done. Mind you, the timber or the string would probably fail before the... Um, oh, I feel like it's about to explode. Before anything else... Oh, I can hear the fibres in the wood starting to... They're not liking that at all. There we go. There we go. Now so. What's that? Is that a... Those people with perfect pitch. What? What, what no or tune is that? Alright, so the time on the live stream is currently um, 9 minutes and 7 seconds. I'll let you know when we get to the bottom.
so far we've been going at it for nearly a minute so we're not going really halfway. Alright, we'll take a pause. <sighs> I can decide my own bedtime. No, I should go to bed. That right. They've got my best intentions at heart. This is so uncomfortable to hold it on account of uh, me not rounding over the edges. Smaller bow saws are a good beginner project for anyone looking to get started. at the minute. This is a very ergonomic place for me to be sawing. Uh, Five seconds when we started. At least I'm getting a good work workout in. chatting that I missed from Tyler official um, I asked about those hardwood maple slabs a couple of days ago same email with them what's your email so I can um, it's onward2 at gmail.com I'll check right after the stream sound for that thirds of the way there now I reckon. using that tool probably ever again I didn't even get a satisfying cook out of it because it fell and cracked in two ah well I'm Will Gelga I got Neil um ach ach whatever Irish for I'm learning 55 day Duolingo streak couple of fuck last game Right.
four minutes for eight inches. That's a good joke there. There we go. Was it four minutes? I feel like it might have been five minutes. <laughs> go to bed, mate. Oh, don't worry, I will. Love the silver button, looks great. There might be a certain package in the mail tomorrow now, fingers crossed. Because if, if, if it doesn't come tomorrow, um, I'd have to wait till next week before I get to open it up. It was supposed to come on Friday. I am, of course, talking about the golden play button. So that'll be a fun moment, unboxing that. Got a bit of modern, oh, thank you very much. Of course, I'll be onto that around here. What's on my agenda next week, Glenn? Good question. So suppose tomorrow morning, I'm gonna be here early in the morning to meet a man who's coming to collect um, some ash I cut down recently to bring it to a sawmill. Then at two o'clock, I must head into Cork City because I'm, I'm on the universities um, there, Cork uh, University, University College Cork is having a woman called Claudia Kinmouth, who has written a book called Irish Country Furniture, 1700 to 2000. It's a book I really like. It's about furniture that was made by kind of the lay men in their free time. Uh, so that'll be uh, fun talking to her. Um, then I'll probably head away up to Wicklow, um, where I'll be um, learning how to make big timber frame trusses. On Thursday night then, I'll be in be in the capital in Dublin, meeting um, some people from Tullamore Dew. They're having some dinner party and they invited me to come to it. So I said, why not? Sounds like I might get some free whiskey. Um, and then on Friday, I'm back down to Cork as a friend is uh, performing a music thing. Then on Saturday, my grandmother turns 80. So we'll go say hello to her. And then on Sunday, there's a surf competition that I'm going to watch. So we have a busy, exciting week ahead of us. Lots to look forward to. So I'm looking forward to this week now, to be honest. Am I a member of any societies at UCC? Um, not really, because I, I, I deferred, so I'm never going to go back to college. Well, I don't think I'll go back to UCC after dropping out, but... um. I'd be uh, somewhat active in the Folklore Society. Uh, I run a little segment there called Own Stones, where I visit old um, stone circles and standing stones and stuff like that. And um, yeah, talk about them and the folklore and the history surrounding them. Do I have a Facebook page? No, I just got a good bunch of Facebook imposter accounts taken down. And not even a week later, there's like a billion of them back up. It's so frustrating. Facebook is an absolute disgrace of a company. You think for a multi-billion dollar organization they'd be able to wrap their heads around basic content theft like prevention. Alas, no, no they haven't. Oh yeah, this is a bill hook. Um, it's for, it's used in coppice work and green woodworking. Don't like the handle that's on it, so I'm going to put a new one on it at some point. Um, sharpen her up and uh, get her using it again. <laughs> Watch out with their own Instagram. Yeah, well, I actually am on Instagram. I have uh, an account on Instagram that's legitimate. And I think I'm the foremost own rare. As in, I think there are imposter accounts, but I think the of them have done done very well. Mm -hmm. Why so late? Uh, most of the audience here is American, so it's, it's, it's tailoring to them. I suppose it's probably around about six or seven in the afternoon there. So uh, yeah, it's 12 o'clock here. Why don't I make a Facebook page? I did, and then they were, the people stealing my videos were flagging my videos for content theft. So I, I, it's so stupid. It's six o'clock, 5.40 in Texas. So yeah, I'd imagine if I went live at like 
9 or 10 o'clock American time the videos, uh, the lives might do a bit better but that would also involve staying up till 2 or 3 in the morning which would just throw a spanner in my sleep cycle Am I going to celebrate Baltina? I'd like to go to the festival that happens, but I don't know any details about it. So I suppose I'll have to look into it. But yeah, I'd like to. Um, what am I doing for May Day? May Day is the first day of May. There's a lot of folklore surrounding that. So I'd, I might make a video about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anytime I look at the screen long enough, a load of people send in the comments because they know I'm reading them, but then this, they come on so fast, I can't read them at all. Um, yes, I would like to do some more longer vlogs and stuff um, over summer. Uh, there's a lot of work goes into the vlogs because they take us nearly a day to edit. Um, so I need to up my editing speed skills. Um, have I the Stanley 298 or the 278 rebate plane? I do have one of those, I'm not sure which. I think it's the 278. Um, it's not here in the workshop, I have it at home because it's a fairly useless plane, I'll be honest with you. As in, it's a fairly use plane because there's only, there's only one circumstance where you would ever use it. And um, yeah, I've never been in a position where I've had to do that. And if I did have to do it, I'd probably just use a router or a spindle molder um, because, yeah. I, I, yeah, I do like showing off the traditional methods online and there's a lot of charm to them and they're very cool. But if I'm being paid to do a job, it would take me a whole hour, maybe half an hour, to cut a groove on a board, a big long board, um, whereas I have it done in a minute with a machine router. So if I'm, if I'm not being filmed and I'm, I have a job I need to get done with no dilly-dallying, that's what I'd be doing. A spider on my hat oh lads my yeah i saw a cobweb in my car today actually and um i was looking at it and a fly was kind of flying around my dash and he landed in the cobweb that was tucked into the corner and he got stuck for a few seconds and um while he was stuck he was kind of shaking the web and the spider crawled out from like a crevice crevice somewhere and like was fighting him but then he got away and then the spider ran back into his hole so then I cleaned my dash. But it was, I, it was cool to see a bit of a tussle going on. A bit of live action sport there from the comfort of my driver's seat. Hair reveal when the male button arrives, not a chance. Favorite drink, Ishka, bit of water. Hello guy, cups of tea, love cups of tea. Um, maybe coffee, pints of stout, and um, I don't know, orange juice. How do you set your saw teeth on your tenon saw? You need to get a tool called a saw set. Um, you can look them up on Google. They're a little contraption where you squeeze them and it pushes every second tooth to the left and every other tooth to the right um, creating what's known as a kerf when you're sawing along close the bottle i lost the lid so i'm gonna have to finish the bottle now what's a good beginner project a mallet I actually got a tutorial somewhere on this channel. Maybe you could check it out. What do you think is a good wooden product that would sell well in Ireland? Nothing sells well in Ireland. We're very closed-fisted in this country. 
for better or worse, we don't like spending money on wooden knickknacks. Um, if you're young, you kind of got a um, uh, cute, charming young person trying to be entrepreneurial, um, which is a great sales thing. Like if you're, I don't know, a 16 year old lad and you're making coasters or you're making garden furniture, um, the local mammies would love that. And they go, ah, oh, isn't that great now to support a young lad out on his own? Um, but then when you kind of get maybe in your 20s and you're trying to make high end bespoke stuff, um, that takes a lot of man hours to produce, uh, so demands a fairly high price tag. No one really wants to pay for that. Um, so unless you can find the right people. Uh, I really don't know what to tell you, man. I, I'm sorry, that's not a good answer, but it's the only one I have. Uh, we have a super chat in from uh, Banjovi1, who says, favorite county in Ireland? Where would I travel in the US? Favorite county in Ireland? I've seen a lot of Ireland the last two years because a job allows me to travel up and down the country to different craft shows. And uh, I think it's Mayo. I think Mayo is, it's, it's, the Irish spirit is still alive and well in certain parts of Mayo. Um, I like, yeah, I, there's no there's no county in Ireland I haven't enjoyed being in. They've all got their own uniqueness and charms to them. Where would I travel in the US? I, I have no idea. There's so there's so much of it. Uh, and I I kind of like it here. I, don't, I wouldn't go for too long. So uh, the, is there certain, I know there's a few states that are more renowned for having loads of really nice hand tools than others. So I'd probably go there. Have I considered making my own play button out of ash? Yes, I have. Um, I remember when I hit uh, 10,000 followers on TikTok, that's something I was going to do, but then I never got around to making it. Arcadism, Arcade, Arcadism, uh, with a super chat of euros, it's unusual, but you didn't write anything. What's County Sligo like? I like Sligo. Tubber Curry, I think, is in County Sligo. That's a good good craft show that goes on every summer. No. Yes, Tubber Curry. There is an American woodworker claiming that hickory is the best wood for handles, uh, not ash. But yeah, on paper, hickory is probably harder than ash. It's also shock resistant and flexible, which is great for handles, but it doesn't grow here. It's not a native tree species in Europe. Um, so I'm big on growing trees that are, you know, compatible with the local ecology and wildlife. Um, and then harvesting them when they fall or die. Um, and yeah, th there's no point in us growing hickory here when we have ash growing in every hedgerow in the country. Um, that's still a very, very good ash, very good wood for handles. Plus it's easier to work with. Local trees are the best trees, amen. Oh cool, someone gifted Piers Doc. A membership didn't know that was something someone could do but thank you very much whoever is out there gifting memberships you made a table because of me well, that's flattering <laughs> that I possessed someone to build a table fair play to you Darren crying do I think I'll be in Belmont again I booked into the calendar now and uh, Unless I'm missing my arms and legs, touch wood, I'm not. I'll be there. In your opinion, what's the best branded axe to buy? Um, Granfors Brooks. I think they're a Swedish crowd. Um, they make very nice axes for all sorts of purposes. From building log cabins to spitting firewood to carving spoons. Arcadism again. I uh, had nothing useful to say or ask. 
uh, but did want to show some appreciation for your content. But thank you very much. I appreciate that very, very much. Uh, Bucky um, just got gifted a sub. Thanks, whoever's gifting all these subs. I'm afraid there's no benefits to them. Uh, there's no exclusive content or anything like that. Um, but maybe I'll do something fun at some point. Leon has... Um, well, thank you, Leon. You're a gentleman. Very generous. Hey, okay, I think I'm going to answer one more question and then I'll sign it off because I want to go to bed. Hmm. Any projects you'd like that intimidate you? Um, I was going to build a type of wooden uh, shed called a crook frame, um, but I got talked out of it by the fella who was milling up the timber that uh, making a, a simpler design called a box frame. Uh, so that's something I've been intimidated out to doing. I haven't done enough timber frames yet, so I was kind of throwing myself in on the deep end there, which can be a good way to learn, but timber framing can be very unforgiving if you get it wrong. So we'll keep it simple just while I up my skills. So uh, not that I'm too scared to do it ever, just we'll park it for now. Right. Um, Thank you all who joined, um, who sent in super chats, especially you with Len, again, Len, um, and Leon for gifting memberships. Uh, Leon Halasam, Haslam. Uh, right, good night, um, and good luck. Slán Gafol, which means bye for now in Irish, for those of you asking.